Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Baldur's Gate 3. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, after that the launcher, and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to Control Panel, open it, go to Manage 3D Setting, and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS, uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring, uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So when you will launch the game, you will see a launcher like that. Uh, I did a couple of tests for DirectX 11 versus Vulkan, so you have two different API over here. If you have an NVIDIA card, for me, DirectX 11 was better. I was getting 10% to 12% more FPS. Less stabilization in my FPS. I'm getting some random drop with DirectX. It was a little bit better with Vulkan, but I still recommend to go with DirectX for NVIDIA card. If you have a Radian card, I tested it on my RX 580 and it was better with Vulkan. Mo uh, better FPS, but also more stable FPS. So my recommendation is with Radian, normally go with Vulkan, but honestly, just do some testing before doing it. Uh, it really depends. I don't have all those video cards. Some generation are different. So the last generation from uh, Radian, I don't have it. So maybe it performed better with DirectX 11. But honestly, normally Radian is always better with Vulkan. So that's why I recommend to go with Vulkan. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, make sure that your display adapter uh, using your proper GPU. I know a lot of you folks are playing on a laptop, so you don't want to see your integrated GPU. You want to see the dedicated one. Also, I really recommend to use your native resolution on your monitor. So if you have a 1080p, go 1080p. If you have 4K, go 4K. Take your maximum refresh rate also. So in my case, it's 240. I don't know why it says 39. It seems like they just do minus one over here. Display mode, make sure that you're using the full screen one. Don't use borderless or window. You, uh, you will see that you're getting some random stuttering with borderless. So that's why I recommend to go with full screen. I don't use the V-Sync. I always disable that in any game. I don't like the input lag that uh, V-Sync will provide. You can use other technology like G-Sync or FreeSync. If you don't like the tiering when you're playing the game, you can just like activate your V-Sync if you want. Now let's go to the... <laughs> custom parameter so first of all model quality i have three different options over there you have three percent that you can gain high to medium medium to low i just saw one percent difference so that's why i recommend medium it's pretty much the same thing with detail uh, distance not a huge impact in my fps that was a bit weird so it's like two percent low versus medium but medium versus high i saw four to five so that's why i recommend to go with medium instance dist distance sorry i recommend also to use medium too much pop in at low uh if you want like a better image quality honestly just go with medium for this one texture quality and texture filtering it really depends on the amount of vram that you have if you have a lot of vram just make sure that you don't um uh take all of it make sure that you have 10 15 percent left in your vram on your gpu so you can use a msi afterburner if you want to see the amount of vram that you are using uh for example if you have like 10 gig and more you can probably use ultra and anisotropic at maximum and if you want to lower over there make sure that you lower also the other one and just follow those steps i'm gonna put it back at max Animation level uh, detail, you can go at medium, 2% difference between low and medium, 3% with high, and medium is a good compromise. I recommend to deactivate, sorry, I recommend to deactivate the dynamic crowds. 
Uh, this one was thinking like crazy my FPS on my laptop. I had like an old Dell laptop uh, with four cores and eight threads with an integrated, uh, not an integrated, a dedicated GPU, but it's a 1050 mobile. And uh, yeah, when I deactivate this, it helps a lot. I gain like 6% uh, in my FPS. For lighting, this one is really important. If you want pure FPS, just go low everywhere. Uh, if you look at the shadow, if you go high to low, you can expect 12% boost over here. Cloud, ultra to low, you can expect another 10% boost. And fog quality, uh, ultra to low, you can expect an 8% boost in your FPS. So it's pretty huge. But if you want a decent image quality, what I recommend is go with medium everywhere. Uh, you will lose for sure FPS. But honestly, you don't need 300 FPS in this game. So if you want to keep a decent uh, image quality, but good FPS, good performance, I recommend to go with medium. After that, in the post process, for sure, if you have the LSS, go with quality. Don't use balance and performance. They're pretty trash. I feel like the game is too much blurry, but you will gain a nice 20% in your FPS with quality. So I definitely recommend to use that. For AMD FSR, I'm not a huge fan. It's the one version, the 1.0 version. So maybe just wait an update to for the 2.1. It's not you. Not you will not gain a lot of FPS, and your game will look very blurry. So don't use that. Uh, if you don't have the LSS and you don't use F uh, FSR anti-aliasing, I recommend to just removing it. Um, it's pretty bad the TAA and the LAA. Honestly, it's very blurry. You can try SMAA. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of it. For ambient inclusion, if you uncheck it, you can expect 5% boost, uh, but the game will look very flat, so it's question of preference. Do you really need those FPS? If yes, just uncheck it. If you don't, I recommend to stay at uh, stay, stay checked because you will see that uh, your image quality will be a lot better. Uh, depth of field, just remove that. God rays, you can expect 4% if you uncheck. I recommend to use that to uncheck it. Bloom, same thing, 2% over here. And subsurface scattering, you can expect a nice 3% boost in your FPS. So I just uncheck the rest of it. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Baldur's Gate 3 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rigs, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.